I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and this is episode number 69 of Goulet Q&A. This one's going to be a little different than all the ones we've done in the past, because normally it's just 45 minutes to an hour of me kind of rambling on and on answering your questions, but this week we're kind of taking a different turn with it, um, mainly because we've recently uh, assembled kind of our whole media team. It's been something we've been putting together for the last six months or so, and everybody's now in place, and we are making a lot of cool things happen, but uh, you may or may not realize that it's not just me around here that's making the Goulet videos and, and photos and stuff happen. I've got a whole team of people that help me out with that. So I'm going to feature this media team in this Q&A. So you get to meet everybody and they're going to answer some of your questions that you queued up from last week. So um, go ahead and say hi everybody. Hi. Hi. How's it going? They're a great team and I'm really excited for you to get to know them. So we're going to be answering uh, several questions, but uh, one thing everybody's going to do is introduce themselves and talk about the favorite thing that they have on their desk, something that's meaningful to them. So um, you probably already know me. I'm Brian Goulet, founder of GouletPens.com. And uh, I have these things on my desk that I get asked about pretty much almost every Q&A. I answered it way early on and kind of just got sick of answering it, so I haven't shown them very much recently, but you know, I'll just kind of uh, really get it out there right now. These things are called uh, ooze tubes. And uh, this small one I got when I was about eight years old at a discovery store. Um, you know, all kinds of cool, like, scientific type things. And I remember there was a small one and a big one. I really wanted the big one, but I was eight, and my parents, you know, raised me right, so they made me earn my own money, and I had to buy things myself, you know. They bought me, like, Christmas presents and stuff, but, you know, if I wanted just random toys at random stores, I had to save up and, and earn it. Um, so I didn't have the money for the big one, only had the little one, so I've had this thing for 22 years, I guess. Um, and so I, it wasn't until about probably, you know, when, at the early, you know, uh, what, year and a half ago or so when I started Q&A, I was thinking to myself, like, man, I always wanted that big one. Um, and so I realized that I'm an adult now and I have, you know, $15 that I could use to <laughs> fulfill a childhood dream. So I did a search online and in about four seconds I found this thing. Uh, so I bought it. I tried to buy a blue one, but they sent me a green one instead and I just didn't bother changing it. So uh, here it is, the used tube. It's kind of like an hourglass type thing. I don't know, I just think it's cool and kind of mesmerizing. So I'll just kind of look at it while I'm, uh, you know, contemplating the wonders of the universe. But that's the significant thing that I have on my desk. It's kind of a coming and going of the childhood whatever. I can't get much deeper than that right now. But anyway, uh, so I want to introduce you to the whole Goulet media team. They're going to talk a little bit about what they do and what they have on their desk that's meaningful to them. Take it away. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm the uh, media team manager. Been here about two months now. Uh, so I'm a newbie at the Goulet Pen Company and a newbie when it comes to fountain pens. I had not written with a fountain pen uh, ever uh, until shortly before you know I, I started up here. Um, I, uh, I, I background is in journalism. I went to school at the University of Richmond. I got out of school right about the time journalism was sort of eroding in the traditional sense. Was you know kind of transitioning more to you know online and bloggers and all these different things. So I kind of sold out early. I went to the content marketing side. Um, you know where I could still sort of flourish as a writer. You know as copywriter, editor, and then started to manage some content teams. So I, I love what I do. I love being able to work with people. Uh, I've been in business for myself before, so I appreciate and empathize with everything that the Goulets do. Um, the way and the way, the respect with which they treat their employees is is amazing. Um, I know they celebrate their values not just with their employees but with their customers. So I think you guys have a pretty strong sense of that. So. So yeah, I went from being kind of self-employed to coming over here, which is kind of a risk, but we have a very entrepreneurial environment over here. So um, it's definitely, it certainly paid off and, and I love coming to work each day. Um, this is my workspace, um, kind of fosters the creativity. Um, you know, give you a little tour around the desk here. Got pictures of my kids. I've got an eight month old named Isla and I got a, a three year old named Nolan. Um, but you know, if I had to choose one thing over here that I think really fosters my creativity, really gets the juices flowing. It's this fantastic and bizarre collage that my son put together, which features randomly selected magazine clippings of B-list actors. So we've got like Ryan Reynolds over here with, I don't even, maybe that's Sienna Miller, I don't even know who he's married to. Uh, we've got uh, Robert Pattinson from the Twilight series, very brooding, very pale, five o'clock shadows going on there. And we have Oscar from The Office, so totally completely random. I'm still trying to sort of like 
decipher what my, my son was going for that day. But I, I put it up here. People ask about it, give it strange looks, ask if I did it, you know, that sort of thing. So, so yeah, that's me. That's my workspace. And uh, yeah, welcome. Hi, I'm Margaret, and I'm one of the newest media team members here at Goulet. I started here about six months ago in our customer care department, which I loved getting to interact with our customers, learning our products, helping them in any way I can. But I'm super excited to be here as a community coordinator, interacting with you guys on all our social media channels. Um, I went to James Madison University and studied psychology. And for the past few years, I've been working for a nonprofit with high school and middle school kids. Um, so it's a bit different being here, but I've loved what I've um, been getting to do. My husband and I are pretty new to Richmond, so we've loved getting to learn the city, try all the awesome restaurants, um, explore. So it's just been a really fun time getting to be here. This is my workspace, which I really love. There's so much awesome space to be creative. One of my favorite things on my desk is this picture um, that I got as a gift. It's from JMU. Um, it's on the quad, which is a really memorable place. My husband and I met there, so it just brings back a lot of fun memories having that on my desk. Hi, my name is Madigan. I'm one of the new community coordinators here at Goulet Pens. I graduated in 2008 from Virginia Tech with a degree in international studies. But mostly while I was there, I spent my time in the dance studio dancing with the Contemporary Dance Ensemble. After graduation, I worked for a nonprofit for a year before moving to South Korea. I taught kindergarten there and spent a lot of time traveling. I went to Japan, Australia, the Philippines, and Thailand, which was definitely my favorite. You're here in my workspace, and one of my favorite things at my desk is my desk family. My fiance made this for me after I told him I was missing everybody while at work. So this is my fiance, Shane, our cat chicken, and our dog Klaus. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm the photographer here at the Goulet Pen Company. Um, I've been working here for about 10 months. Um, I graduated last spring from Virginia Commonwealth University with a degree in photography. And you know, when I was little, people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would always draw myself in front of an easel painting with like a little beret on. And it's great because it really hasn't changed that much. Um, I'm just behind a camera now and you know, growing up I took every art class I could, um, you know, just trying to get as many different areas of experience and just like really wanting to be creative and it's great because here I feel like fountain pen, with fountain pens, you know, it embodies writing, it embodies art, it, you know, you can do so many things with it and so I'm just really um, happy um, to be doing what I love every day and getting to, you know, be creative with, with the products and with the people I work with. Hi, I'm Jenny, and I'm the videographer here at Goulet Pens. I've been working here for about six months, and I went to James Madison University, where I studied media and design. Um, when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be one of two things, either a pilot for the military or an on-air news reporter. Um, I spent most of my life thinking that I was going to be an anchor woman for some national news station, um, but I slowly discovered that I am not very good um, in front of the camera, as you can probably see. So um, I did a little bit of soul searching, and I realized that being behind the camera and editing and animation and all the stuff that comes along with that was really where my passion lies. So that is how I ended up here. Um, this is my workstation. Um, my favorite thing about my workstation is my desk. Um, my best friend and I put it together and stained it and I get to look at it every day and remember how awesome and what a good time it was that we had together while we made it. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be here on the media team with all the amazing creative people and I hope you are looking forward to more stuff to come. First question we have this week is from Mike on Facebook. And Mike asks, I'm a skeptic, so I must ask, who actually does the Monday matchup drawings and paintings? Is it solely done by the Goulet member Noted, or is it a collaboration from multiple members? Well, Madigan, who is a recent addition to our media team here, uh, is done a lot of Monday matchups, has been very involved with that. So I think she's the good one to take it away on this question. So Madigan, tell Mike what Monday Matchup is all about. So one of my favorite parts of working here at Goulet Pens is participating in Monday Matchup. I never really considered myself an artist before I discovered Fountain Pens, so it's been a really fun journey for me. Jenny and Sarah were really instrumental in getting me involved, and I'm so thankful that they did. I can assure you that all of the art that you see is done by the person listed on the blog. Uh, we do 
collaborate a little bit where, you know, it's a team environment here at Goulet. So in terms of concepts and maybe writing um, ideas and quote ideas, uh, that's worked on together, but all of it is written and drawn by the person listed. Got a question here from Mike Wynn that came in through Goulet Penn's blog. Um, he actually gave two questions. Mike, sorry, I'm only going to answer the first one here. So uh, the question you asked was, though Goulet Pens is often on the cutting edge, what media productions do you see other fountain pen sites that you would like to try? And given that Mike is our media team manager, he's kind of my partner in helping to assess where we should focus our priorities, assessing what else is going on. He looks into our analytics and things like that, sees what's working, what's not. Um, so he's a little more behind the scenes, but is very influential in kind of our strategic stuff. So he's very appropriate in answering this one. So Mike, go for it. So one of you asked what other uh, you know, new media sites we look at out there, what what are we looking at other than fountain pens? And, and we absolutely do. We want to know what's trending out there. You know, if there's different software should we, we should be using or different presentation styles. You know, I'm really interested in sort of content strategy. Like, I mean, content strategy, I mean, that could be, you know, how you're putting your content up, where it's accessible, how often you're refreshing it, um, how, you, how you manage your content on different channels and those relationships. Uh, you know, a site that I love, uh, I used to work as a film critic, um, I still do on the side a little bit is Rotten Tomatoes. So Rotten Tomatoes is a fantastic site. It's been around a while. You may know it as a is a professional movie critic aggregator. So it brings in snippets of reviews from different sites that assigns them a score, which you know it's leveraging existing content, which is pretty easy to do. You don't have to generate all this unique content, but they have some of that too. But I think the thing that's really separated them is their user generated content. So they have reviewers and they put their you know they shine a light on their content as well. They have this great community of, of reviewers where, I mean, they probably they have a lot of just amateur film reviewers who are more popular on there than people that do it for a living, even though there are fewer and fewer of them each day. Um, so they do a good job of, of, of putting a light on all this content out there uh, and being able to sort of uh, sort and organize it in different ways and combining it with their own unique content. I think they execute content strategy in a really, really fantastic way. Zadez from Facebook had a really interesting question that we're all going to answer. Um, Zadez asked, a general question for your team, what's it like to be a part of the GPC and how does a normal day go about? Um, this, is a, this is an interesting one. I'll go ahead and answer this one too because I think this is fairly relevant for me. Um, so my day here looks very different from one day to the next. I am very much running about somewhat in an organized chaos type of manner every day. Um, as you can imagine now, we have about 30 people here at Goulet. A lot of different people, a lot of different things happening. Um, you know, a lot of things cooking all the time, and I need to kind of be plugged into all of that. So a lot of my time is spent in various meetings, talking to people, coaching, training, um, you know, some technical things too. I'm responding to YouTube comments or emails or whatever. A lot of various things. So, you know, a lot of my structure of my day comes around the various meetings that we have. You know, we have a whole leadership team that we've built out here. So kind of different departments within the company, you know, but a lot of that's changed because Rachel and I, when we first started the company five years ago, it was just her and I. So we did everything, you know, and as we've grown, we literally have had to just make delegation like our hobby, you know, because as we grow, we can't just hang on to things anymore. We have to train and train and coach and delegate and get as much help with other things so that we can focus on more of the strategic and kind of forward looking uh, things that the company has to deal with as it grows. So that's, you know, very evident even in with this media team here, you know, you literally used to be just me in my bedroom or whatever, you know, with a camera pointed at a desk, the audio was terrible, the video quality was disgusting, but it got the content out there. You know, I always focus on learning the pens inside and out. And I still do that, but much less time in my day is spent learning the products. Part of it is I've just amassed so much knowledge in my head. I don't have to spend eight hours with a product like I used to do way back in the day because I already know a lot about the various things and I have a lot of knowledge to bring to the table. So that doesn't require quite as much time of my day anymore. Now it's much more about the business and strategic related things because that stuff gets a lot more complicated with a business at this size. So I read a ton of books. 
Um, I've got a lot of really good authors I've talked about in various uh, you know Q and A's before. Um, you know Dave Ramsey and Gary Vaynerchuk, um, lots of John Maxwell. You know a lot of these um, these um, you know business leaders that uh, I can pull experience from because I've never run a company this size before. So it's uh, it's something that I'm really kind of figuring out as I go. And it's pretty much been like that for five years strong now of facing things we've never seen before and having to figure it out. So that's most of my day is just like, having challenges come up and then figuring out solutions for them. And I really enjoy that. Um, and then of course, I always love sitting down shooting videos like this. It's still like very near and dear to my heart. Even as we've grown as crazy things have gotten, I've still really tried to make shooting the videos and engaging with you all as a community, a kind of a core part of what I do. So a lot of the responding to comments and emails and stuff ends up being something that I have to do at home at night after the kids go to bed. You know, my kids go to bed around eight or 8.30, something like that. You know, I've got a three year old and a five year old. So when and I'm with them, it's definitely dedicated family time and I really enjoy them. They're at a really fun age. Um, but once they go to bed, it's like, all right, I got stuff to do. All the stuff that I didn't get done during the day, you know, I'm kind of... Rachel and I, we're, we're kind of wired differently than most folks. You know, we don't need a lot of downtime necessarily. We really enjoy kind of going at it, uh, you know, uh, af even after we put in a full work day. We just have a higher than normal uh, degree of being able to get work done, especially when it's something that we're this passionate about. So that's really kind of what my, my day looks like. I work much less on the weekends than I used to in the early days because I got the family time now. I really spend a lot of time with my kids. My parents live nearby. so. Definitely Goulet family time there, but when I'm here, it's all about spending time with people because business is really, when you boil it down, it's all about people. We deal with a lot of products and things like that, but it's it's all personal interactions. That's, that's a lot of what it boils down to. So that is most of my focus and my time. However, in order to make that work so that there is actual technical boots on the ground work that needs to get done, that's where the media team really comes in and helps me out. So uh, I'm gonna intro, you know, kind of let them just take it away uh, and tell you about what their daily life is like because they all kind of do very different things each day. And I think you'll be really interested to hear how all the pieces fit together. So a typical day um, for me kind of, it kind of varies a little bit just depending on what projects we have going on. Um, it's pretty much like a guarantee of course that I'll be photographing something, but whether it's for like a blog post or um, something for social media or like another project we have going on, it just kind of depends and we'll have like meetings and brainstorming to kind of like prepare for that. Um, so that's a lot of fun because we all, you know, get together and collaborate and, um, you know, leaving those meetings is always really inspiring because then you're just, um, you know, set to work on whatever you want to work on. So. You know, it kind of varies, but it's a lot of fun because no matter what it is, it's um, it's always really creative and it, it's always really um, helpful and educational and it's fun to be a part of something like that. Because, you know, there's so much is happening in real time here and it's this really entrepreneurial uh, environment. Like, we have a sense of what's going to happen each day, but we never know for certain. Especially when you're talking about managing channels like social media. Um, we don't, we're not sure exactly when products are going to come in. We have an idea. Again, we have these guideposts, but I think it's exciting because, you know, we're going to adapt to what happens on the fly. Uh, that keeps it really fun. That keeps it really engaging. So we're meeting a lot. I mean, we actually have traditional meetings, but we have a lot of pull-ups, a lot of impromptu check-ins. Um, we're walking around, just collaborating in real time. Um, so that is, that's pretty unique. You know, I've worked in a lot of offices before where there's you know, cubicles and walls and rules and uh, meeting rooms and all that kind of stuff. So we, we have that when we need it, but we have just, just a little bit of it. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of it, you know, since a lot we're new and as a team, we're just still gelling. There's a lot of just going back and forth, getting a sense of what we're working on, learning on the fly. Um, and that's kind of what the day is like. It's just extremely fluid. But, you know, we're out there, you know, looking at social media, looking at what you're sharing, uh, looking at what we're putting out there, seeing your reaction. Uh, discussing how we're going to launch new products, you know, if it's something that's really brand new, like what can we do creative, what can we do creatively, how can we draw on that audience, so, um, it, you know, it's a ton of fun. A typical day here in the office, um, we're on the social media channels, interacting with you guys, seeing what's going on, but what I love about this job is that we're flexible. Things are changing, um, so we have meetings, we have things that we're doing every week, day in and day out, but we're also um, attentive to what's going on with you guys, um, interacting, answering questions, posting new content. Um, so things are typical, but we're also flexible along the way. 
A typical day at Goulet is kind of rare. Um, you'll come in thinking that you have all of these things to do, um, and in the course of a couple minutes, you'll realize that none of that is important and that you have to do all these other things. Um, but that's why one of our values is be flexible, and I really value my team members because they are always there to support and you know help out when we need it. Um, most of the time I come in and you know edit the videos from the previous day or you know work on planning for the next video shoot or culture idea or anything like that. Typically my work revolves around shooting and editing and sitting at my computer and you know making up stories to to show you guys more about us or more about our products. There's no such thing as a typical day here at Goulet in my opinion. <laughs> Since moving to the media team, that's especially true. Uh, a lot of different things come at you. Uh, it's, it's a lot of collaboration and jumping on new projects, uh, which makes it really exciting and fun. Greg Moore asked a question through YouTube about some of our photography. Um, so he said, photography is one of my other loves. What kind of cameras do you use and what kind of setup do you use for photographing the pens in terms of lighting, backdrops, tripod, ISO, shutter speed. It seems like you want to know a lot of the dirty details about uh, how the sausage is made as far as our photography goes. There is a lot that goes into it and Sarah is our amazing photographer who will be able to show you the whole setup that we have going on there. So Greg, grab your notepad because here it comes. For the photography setup here at Goulet, we use Canon um, equipment and you know, there's nothing against Nikon. We just, I think Brian picked Canon and have been, we've been rolling with it ever since. Um, we shoot with the 5D Mark III, which is an awesome powerhouse camera. Usually we have on it a 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 um, L series lens, which is like, the glass is amazing. It's super crisp. We use it for, you know, standard overhead shots. And then if we do any like special setups, um, you know, for marketing or like slideshows or things that, you know, need to be supporting photos for blog posts. Um, it's another great one just because you can get such a wide range um, in that 24 to 70 range. Um, we also use for like really tight shots of like the nib or like any subtleties in, in ink or, you know, just to get all the fun details. We use a macro 100 millimeter. Um, and I don't think I could do my job at all without this lens. This is probably the most irreplaceable one just because fountain pens are so small that, and there's so many like intricate details that this really, really captures it. Um, for the actual setup itself, we use, um, it's funny, Brian actually built the setup. It's like um, for, for the standard shots, like on white that you see on the website, Brian built it five years ago out of PVC pipe and cloth, and it's like kind of an amazing rickety structure that does the job like so well that we just haven't replaced it. Like we have a replacement, but we just never set it up because why do that when it works so well? Um, and you would probably never ever be able to tell that it was it was handmade, but it's great. Over here to my right, you can see that, well, you might, I don't know, it's kind of raining out, so. You, there's probably not a whole lot of window light coming through, but there's a big north facing window and a workbench and I have a bunch of, you know, backdrops, like pieces of wood, things we've collected that we can just put out, lay some products out, um, and it's just like a huge natural soft box. Like anyone who's, you know, has studied art or anything, like knows that you you know, north facing light is the just so great because you never have direct sunlight coming in so it's always diffused and it just looks really really beautiful um, for you know any shots that we want to do with creative projects or you know just any sort of special shot. I have a question from Emily Baxter and this uh, question came from YouTube. Emily you have left a lot of great feedback here but I'm just gonna kind of pluck the question out of your um, very you know uh, wonderful embellished comment here. Um, the question you asked was, what platform do you, you use to send a social media message simultaneously? Hootsuite or whatever, my church d uses that, but it's cumbersome. Do y'all just write a unique message for each platform? Well, we have an interesting answer for this question, and I'm gonna let Margaret take it away on this one because she is now learning the ropes on how we do a lot of our social media engagement here at Goulet. 
One thing I love about social media is that we're creating a community of people who have a similar interest. So we monitor a lot um, of different channels that have a ton of different strengths. So we post unique and creative content to each channel. We don't use any sort of program that posts simultaneously to each channel, but we work really hard at being creative to navigate um, each platform, to engage with those specific followers, um, and just be creative with the way that we do that. Sometimes we'll post content across multiple different platforms and you know share something on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, but those platforms are all really different. So the way that we do that is still unique, um, which I really love about this job. Got a question here from Amaryllis LaChapelle, hope I say that right, uh, from YouTube. And Amaryllis, you, are very engaging. You, I see you asking a lot of good questions and leaving comments on the YouTube videos. The only problem is you must have some privacy setting or something on your YouTube channel. I can't reply directly to any of your comments. So maybe go in and check your settings. See if there's anything that you can do so that I can directly reply to your stuff. But either way, you had a great question for this week, so we picked it out. Um, and the question is, what camera and lens combo is used to shoot the videos? And then you say, give a little shout out to my kids talking about how adorable they are, which, you know, is just so the truth. Um, but anyway, so Jenny is my video wizard here who helps out with so much of the great stuff that we put out here. Um, and she is uh, going to go ahead and take it away talking about what equipment that we use and all of the various contraptions that we have for our video magic. Take it away, Jenny. For the video shooting here at Goulet, we're typically using one of two cameras. Um, we typically use a Canon Vixia, um, and this is what we use for like the Goulet Q&As or the overhead shots for the product reviews. Um, if we're not using the Vixia, we're using a Canon 6D. Um, that's actually what we're using right now to shoot this. Um, we typically use the Canon 6D when, for like face shots, when we need it to be extra crisp or like super important like close-up shots where you need like all the detail. Um, we also use the Canon 6D for a lot of our more portable needs, like if we're shooting around the house like the 12 days of uh, the 12 days of Christmas or you know any other fun Goulet culture videos um, for our setup we are shooting typically in Brian's office um, and we have the Canon Vixia hanging about you know two feet below the ceiling on um, a custom-made video rig um, that Brian and I built together um, and it is aiming down at his desk so you can see like the details and what he's doing with his hands for like the tips and tricks or, or just like explaining the product um, we also use the Canon 60 um, in front so Brian can you know visually explain to the camera like what's what's going on. Sam Ferguson had a question for YouTube. It says uh, kind of an obvious choice of a question for your team but I'm always curious what's their favorite pen ink combination? So um, I think this is an interesting question because everybody's got different tastes. That's one of the best things about fountain pens is you can personalize it and cater it to your own just style, your own individual writing preference and we definitely all have a diverse writing preference so we're all going to share what our favorites are. So we're, we're choosing our favorite uh, pen and ink pairing. So, you know, I have kind of a li limited experience here. I'm still doing a lot of experimenting, lots of, you know, things exploding on my hands and my fingers, lots of, lots of cleanup. This pen caught my eye, this thing that looks like a bumblebee buzzing around over here. This is the uh, Regatta Sport. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm a sucker for a gimmick, and the cap is magnetic. I'm sure you guys have all seen this, and some of you own it. So to me, that's pretty cool. It's kind of a big pen, but I still like it. Uh, and I've got this... Uh, Detrimentus Ultramarine Ink, which I just kind of stumbled upon, and I've heard it since been discontinued. Um, so, so I guess there's some nostalgic value here. So you can't buy it anymore. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, use this very conservatively and maybe hoard it. Um, so look for that on eBay. So yeah, I'm still trying to learn. Still, you know, if you have some pens and inks that you want to suggest for a newbie, um, you know, I do have a Metropolitan as well. So yeah, so please make any suggestions. So I'm still pretty new to fountain pens. I just started using them this summer when I started working here. And I love the Pilot Metropolitan. Um, it's so easy to use. I love the medium nib. Um, so this is my go-to fountain pen. I give it as gifts, um, take it home with me, love it. And my favorite ink is Schaefer Turquoise. The shading is awesome. Um, the color stands out on the page. So it's one of my all-time favorite inks. My favorite pen is definitely this Noodler's Conrad, which showed up on my desk my first day at Goulet. I don't really know where it came from, so it's one of the perks of, of working here, I think. Um, I like to pair it with Diamine Syrah, which is a, a beautiful burgundy color, and I think they, they work really well together. My favorite pen and ink combo is 
a Noodler's Ahab, King Philip Purple with Black Swan and Australian Roses. Um, this is my favorite just because this was my first pen that I bought when I started working here. Um, and I specifically inked it up with the Black Swan just because they like match perfectly. And this has great shading so it also goes with the Flex. And that's um, just been, you know, a really inspiring combo as I like learned how to use fountain pens. My favorite pen is definitely the Delta Unica um, in the orange celluloid. Um, I was able to snag one before they got discontinued, um, and this is in a medium, and I think that it works beautifully with um, Super 5 Deli. Um, they're both like a really nice orange shade, um, and then the ink has a lot of shading, which really draws out a lot of the colors and the flecks um, in the pen. So I really love writing them with them together. I am obsessed with orange, and so this is like a dream come true pairing for me. And to wrap it all up, I know I've talked a lot about my favorite pen and ink combination, and I know I've specifically answered this question in a previous Q&A. Can't for the life of you tell you which one it is, but uh, it's in there somewhere. I'll go ahead and rehash it now. So I've talked a lot about my favorite pen. The honest truth is I have a lot of favorite pens. I have a pretty decent pen collection now, and I like a lot of pens for a lot of different reasons. But the one that is the most significant to me was the first gold nib pen I ever had. It's been with me for four years now. The Blue Pilot Custom 74 with a medium nib. It's just, you know, it's significant to me because of my history with it. I also really like the way that it writes. So that would be my pen choice. And then the ink would have to be Noodler's Liberty Silesium. I helped develop that ink with Nathan Tardif, so it obviously means a lot to me in that way. But it's a Goulet Blue ink. It's got permanent qualities to it. And it's, uh, it's a well-performing ink, and it has a uh, historical significance. If you look at the theme of the ink, it's got Patrick Henry on there. You know, I live just a few miles from Patrick Henry's birthplace, and so it, I went to Patrick Henry High School. You know, so there's a lot of very significant kind of uh, things going on with that ink. You pair them up together, the ink matches the pen and everything. It just, it all works so well together. So that's, that's my preference. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this q and It was definitely kind of a different format than we've done before, but I think it came together really well. Mad props to Jenny for getting it together like this. It actually was kind of a logistical nightmare to get this video together. We had just about everything go wrong that you could have imagined. Our mic went out, so all of the footage that we originally shot was without audio, so that was bizarre. And then when I went to shoot my segments, the card just wiped all the data for some reason. So this is actually the second take I've had to do on everything. So it's just like craziness. And then we've got a snow day here today. So like the preschool that my kids go to shut down. I had to have my parents come and pick up the kids. It's really just been kind of a bizarre week, but that's kind of, you know, change is the only constant around here sometimes. And we have to adapt. That's why be flexible is part of our number one company value. Just, you never know what you're going to run into, but even still, I think this came together so well. I'm really glad to have been able to show you some insights into what goes on on our media team because there really is so much that happens that you don't see that's behind the scenes. And my team here is one of the best teams that I think is out there and I'm super proud of what they do. So I'm really, really glad and I would love to get some feedback from you. So engage with us on really any of our social platforms because we're on all of them, uh, but specifically on YouTube and on the blog, I'd love to hear some comments. Hit up Madigan on Twitter. Hit up Margaret on you know YouTube or Facebook. They're, we're all getting kind of plugged in. We're all working as a team to help out and manage all these things and be there for you wherever you want to talk to us. So that said, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can get more of these Q&As. Or if you're listening to this in the podcast, subscribe to our iTunes channel. That would be great as well. It's been awesome sharing this with you. And right on.